So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to North Hobart Oval. It's been an action-packed day. We've seen three really, really hotly contested grand finals, and that last one was a beauty down to the end. Clarence running out victors, but Lauderdale certainly had plenty of opportunities but uh, just couldn't keep up with them in the end. It now comes down to this, our last grand final of the day. It is the under 16.5s, and it's back to where we started in the first game. It is uh, the two powerhouses. It's North Hobart versus Clarence. It's uh, Andrew Silverfox hopping the main contraposition, and I'm joined by club coach of North Hobart, Bear Robinson. Bear, uh, this is going to be quite an intriguing game. Yeah, it will be. I mean, both sides this year have beaten each other. Clarence earlier in the year beat the Demons by 25, but in in June, late June, the Demons turned around and were able to win by sort of five or six goals. So um, both sides look evenly matched. So they've both been very good defensively for the year. They've both conceded the least amount of points of any uh, teams in the competition. So, um, yeah, it should be a great game. Yeah, it's interesting if, if we're to look at the uh, senior ranks of uh, TSL footy. I mean, let's be blunt, for, for you and uh, Clarence ha have been in a, in a growth phase, so you must be super encouraged. I know you've got a lot of talent going through, I was going to say the Mariners, the Devil program, and you're in three of the four grand finals here. So as, as the senior coach, the club coach, you, you must be very um, hopeful that these kids are going to come on and excited, I guess, to, to have the talent coming through. Yeah, I mean, that player retention is obviously one of the most important yes. things at, at TSL. You've got to make sure these kids continually want to be part of the program. And last year we had guys like um, Kai Coburn, who come out of the 16s, end up playing a senior game at the end of the year. Uh, Lockie Payne and Rennie Morgan both came through the program, played a few year in development league. So... There's guys in this game today that, uh, you know, come and play, get involved with our program next year. Keegan Ryan trained with us before Christmas last year, and he's a guy that you'd think could come into the senior program next year and at least play some development league. So, yeah, he's um, had a pretty good year, hasn't he? In fact, I was only talking with him the other night at the Beakley Awards. He finished with uh, 15 votes behind the eventual winner that was uh, Fergus Kenny. So he had, a, he had a terrific year as the players are going through their warm-ups it's the it's the stages where you get those sort of nerves come out and as a coach how do you find it at this stage because you've done all your preparation how are you feeling at this stage of the game uh there's not really much you can do right now so mm. you just if you're in the coach's box i imagine you're just talking to the other coaches just to make sure you're aware of things you put in place during the week just go over that in the box and um just be on high alert at the start of the game if, if match-ups are going to plan or positional people in the positions you thought they would be so you're probably to be honest you're probably a little bit relaxed right yep. at the moment because yep. there's nothing you can do and it's still sort of five or ten minutes to the start of the game and it's, it's all in the modern uh, vernacular it's all positive reinforcement isn't it? it's not about what you can't do it's just reinforcing the things that you've done well the things that you're trying to achieve and uh, positive visualization as you go into this game it, it's all about that as uh, the boys are going to come in to the National Anthem. The other thing that I've noticed uh, watching from 13s now to 16 and a half, and I know when my uh, boys went through it, I thought, how are they going to play that next step up? The, the differences in height and weight and stature, gee whiz, it incrementally it changes, doesn't it, between the years? Yeah, it does, but I mean, it's just a body of work, isn't yep, it? Yep. Like the development kids have from when they're in grade 7 to grade 10. It's, um, there's a fair bit of growth there, so absolutely. The more training they do, the like, the kids probably starting in the gym from probably grade eight, grade nine onwards. So you'll see some real development in their body shapes there. Um, just walking into the ground today, I was good to see a couple of our young blokes were in the gym today. So <laughs> um, the young kids, once they start doing weights, they you know they start to put a bit of muscle on. They enjoy getting a bit bigger and stronger. Well, it's a great sight as we look out, and here is the Australian national anthem.
as the players now break and get into what is the crucial bounce. Uh, as we said before, the coaches would have done everything they could have done. Simon Harry Harris, of course, for North Hobart and Damian Mansfield. And uh, Corker would have been out there, said the last words, and now the skipper comes in to take over. It's crucial that uh, it's going to be fascinating to watch uh, who can settle first, Bear. Yeah, I think uh, any the finals, particularly early, it's the side who settles first and shows some composure because obviously they're very nervous, which is understandable, but you've just got to make sure you everyone shows some composure, particularly early, because um, even at senior level, um, the sides that don't show that composure quite often have three or four quick goals kicked against them. So, um, obviously I'm biased, but hopefully the North Hobart boys said it Oh, no, we're early. all very neutral <laughs> in, in the box here. There's no, no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, I, I've always thought well, you, ca you can't win the game, obviously, in the first quarter. You, you can dead set lose it by the way you go about it, the way you set yourself up for the rest of the game, your mindset, your body language. And uh, as you just said, showing some composure and set the standard of how you want to play this game. And don't overdo it. Uh, just uh, go out. You can sort of say what you like. It's just another game. Well, you know what? It's not. It is the grand final and you don't come back next week. But you just got to keep your nerve and it's where good players step up. And uh, that's what we're looking for today. And uh, you just want to walk away, Bear, to know that win, lose or draw, you've put your best foot forward. And that's all you can ask for as a human yeah, being absolutely. to put your best foot yeah. forward. I mean, if they if you come off and you've had a crack for four quarters and you don't win, well, you just got to accept it. You weren't quite good enough on the day, but I'm sure it's going to be a cracking contest. Well, for me, this is... You can take your Blundstones, very nice facility, and, and your... What is it called up there now? A Utah Stadium, but uh, I just I just love North Hobart Oval. It's great. You, it, you just feel like you're, you're part of the play, and I know playing as well, you can... You can just uh, hear people breathing over you, can't you? It's a great auditorium to play and watch football at. It's the home of footy, Hoppy, so... It is. Um, it'd be great if uh, we could have a bit of senior competition football here at the highest level. I mean, you pack the joint out. Oh, I don't know about it. We, we can't influence that. If, but if I was uh, running the TSL, I'd be putting it absolutely here. More the boutique stadium, if you like. It, I know next week, probably in the SFL, there'll be plenty here. We'll have a great atmosphere, but... We're going to have a great atmosphere here for the STJFL. There's nearly 4,000 kiddies run around week in, week out as the ball comes out and there's the demons who take first blood through the agency of Ryan. He moves on to, towards his uh, left boot and they go forward. It's more on the defensive side of the ground and it's now going to be a ball up. I'm fascinated to, as you cast your eye over the ground there on the setups of the, uh, the both teams and what you see, how they go about their work. Yeah, yeah, it looks at the moment it's one-on-one -on -one all over the ground, which is really good, although North have got a loose behind the ball. Well, that's where Clarence in the last game, uh, they, had a, they had a loose, and, and I, for me, he was a very dominant player, and they've just got to be really careful the way they go about it, and Clarence now, they pick that ball up towards what is the uh, Ride Street side, and it's just gone a little bit wide, and North Hobart to bring it back into play. Taking their time. Nice short pass. They're swinging it down the line. Oh, but Clarence reading that play very nicely and taking a mark was McCullum. Now, McCullum's a very good young player. He's come up from the lower division and uh, he's stepping up an age group and he knows he's a talent. Reasonable bloodline too, just quietly as the ball goes towards that uh, wing position. And it's a very strong mark by Ward. Ward going back now doing the right thing and looking inside. That's what I like to see in kiddies, isn't it, as well? Just take the blinkers off there and, and look inside. Don't always go down the line. Yeah, we at senior level are telling our guys to take the blinkers off and even take the earmuffs out Yeah, just so they open the play up. Particularly at North Hobart, you don't want to get stuck on this side, side of the ground. It can be hard to score. So Yeah, I spoke to one of the uh, legends of your club in Darren Perry, Perry who assisted me before, and, of course, uh, he's played a few games here. He should know, and... That's the defensive side of the ground. If you want to score, it's more through the middle or through the side that the uh, Peter Sharp Tower was, but not now, but we are in the Duff TV van. And, and just beside us as well is that exciting development which is going ahead here, Bear. Yeah, we're very lucky there. It's a $1.3 million development coaches' boxes, media box, but also probably a game changer for the, for the club, um, a bar and canine facility that's undercover. So... 
you'll be able to come of a weekend and sit up there on the hill next year. Fantastic work as Higgins for North Hobart does a give and a go. He gets it back. He's on a very tough angle, gets it towards the square, that area of uncertainty. It goes in close. And Clarence did a pretty good job there to get uh, the numbers back. And it was two on one. And they forced the issue. And that's the first score uh, of the game in the under 16.5 grand final. North Hobart one behind to Clarence yet to score. But Clarence now getting it out of their defensive area. That was uh, Ward who's got a couple of crucial touches. Gets it back over towards Lewis. Back in board again to Hunter. Hunter goes forward. But uh, backing back, taking a nice mark is Brown showing some good composure as if they must have heard us talking there. North Hobart have come towards this attacking side. Yeah, I, I as a coach love it when they play this side of the ground. I, I actually think it's a bit tough to go through the middle of the ground. If you yep. turn the footy over, it just comes back inside 50 really quickly, but I think it's easier to attack. Oh, well, that's a very strong tackle as we saw there as Clarence were on it. But North Hobart, uh, some evasive work there. It comes out towards Ryan, then to Griggs. Under a bit of pressure is Hurd. Hurd is uh, a left footer and he favours that foot. You can see tough tackling in there and as these boys get a little bit older it gets a little bit more willing and held in the contest and the umpire will come in and ball that one up. He yeah, was a good tackle there by Carmichael. He's got another one with good bloodlines with Matty and Jeremy Burton being his uncle. Oh, a couple yes. of exceptional players for North Hobart. Good tap out, very even contest. It's uh, Ryan at the bottom. Almost slightly held there was Archie Heard to try and get the ball. He's looking back at the umpire. He couldn't understand what that was for. But the reality is, Keegan Ryan has taken all. This is dangerous. And I could hear the oohs and ahs from my co-commentator. And that's a dangerous kick at a 50-50 ball contest, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we're lucky we had enough defensive pressure there. It's not we. Let me just get that. It's not <laughs> we. It's uh, they out there as North Hobart go into attack. And it's a good, strong mark. And... Gee, that was good movement, wasn't transition play. And, oh, what's happened here? It's turned the ball over. This is crucial. So I didn't quite see that. I was just looking down the forward line and something behind the ball. And, gee whiz, you'd hate that as a coach, wouldn't you, Bear? Yeah, that's what I spoke about before, about composure. Yes. Ball in hand. There's no need for any of that. So what was a, a shot on goal from 25 out has gone. And North Hobart now... Excellent work as they try and recover for that uh, one. It's uh, Bingham picks it up, but Clarence have the numbers. Borsburn picks it up. He goes very, very wide and uh, looking for Liam Donaghy, who's a very tall, fleet-footed player, came across from Lindisfarne, has uh, run into that one, and it will be a boundary throw in. Boys just setting up now. Tough contest. It's uh, Kayla Hunter who went up the ruck for Clarence. Doesn't get a clean ball, and that was uh, Griggs gets it out towards Bingham. Bingham goes the kick, end over end, contested ball. Clarence have the numbers, getting it, marching the back, coming in to try and create some open spaces, really clean hands below their knees. Now they get the kick into an area of danger, but beautiful mark there by North Hobart. He really read that one well, didn't he? Yeah, that's, is that Brown? I think it might be. We'll get a yeah. check on that. It's the second mark he's taken inside 50. That was Brown there just now, Sebastian Brown, yeah. who took that mark. Gee, that was a good pair of hands. Yeah, exceptional. All right now, so North Hobart taking their time. They're right below the tower here. I think this might be Blair Wood. He decides to go laterally. They've got the numbers out there, but it's a little bit slow in their transition. And that's a very iffy kick because there are three Clarence players behind the ball showing some great speed and depth of touch. There's been another whistle, and I think it's going to go to North Hobart again off the ball. Some undisciplined play early, and both teams, I think the runners need to get out there, Bear, and just settle them down. Yeah, you say that, but I, I just think the game should just let be flowing yep, there. Yeah, like you're right. The ball was out. Sort of penalised North Hobart there, bringing it back. Maybe he was just trying to prove a point that he, he, he saw it happen. Who knows? But anyway... We can't get inside the man with the green, but the strong mark taken again by uh, the Demons. They go back inboard. Oh, unfortunately, have turned that one over. Came out uh, looking for Bingham. Couldn't take the mark. Not sure which way to go. Goes directly down the ground. Standing and showing some courage there because the Clarence boy came over the top. Just boots the ball forward. Going back there, that was Brown. 
We know he's a very, very tough sort of player. Well picked up by Donaghy. They go back with the open spaces. That one goes low and a bit of a slip as Blair Wood is on the lead out. Opportunity for Clarence, but North picking it up. Good handball. They've got the numbers down back. Carmichael picks it up. He goes to the safety of that boundary line. It's a two on two, but Clarence is showing a bit of deft touch and a bit of speed over the ball. Can't quite see that one is, and it's going to be another ball up. Yeah, I think uh, North Hobart's defensive pressure's been really good. A couple of times Clarence looks like they're out, but there's just been enough pressure um, to create the turnover. So, um, And obviously Clarence are reading the ball really well when it's going inside North Hobart's forward 50. So, Yep, they certainly have. Uh, that was just taking their time, and they're being pretty accurate with some of those passes as North come back inside. They're inside 50 again. They get front spot. The big men go up. Daly's at the back for Clarence. Good handballed out to Borsberm, and they, they really move that well. But it's North Hobart to get it. Uh, put the after. He showed a bit of candy there. There's a couple of boys. We've just got to check on those numbers there at quarter time. I haven't got them, but that was very, very creative play and got it back inside uh, in an attempt to find Jay Britton. And it's uh, North Hobart who were in attack. It is uh, 8 minutes 40 gone here in the under 16.5 uh, grand final in the 2019 STJFL season, the last grand final of the day. It's a cracker day here at North Hobart. North Hobart one behind, <coughs> excuse me, Clarence yet to score. And uh, it's been an action-packed day. And another boundary throw in. Yeah, just a bit of a repeat stoppage here. It's in a good part of the ground for North Hobart. They just need to make sure they keep pressing, giving themselves another chance to get inside 50 and get some scoreboard pressure on the, against Clarence. So that was a very, very good tap out, almost like a set play back into the corridor as uh, Higgins was there and affected that uh, pickup. Another shot on goal and a minor score. I've always thought, so I know I used to get a little bit toey when I was coaching there, when you have the momentum or have the ball in your forward line and you're kind of dominating the game, of which, let's be honest, North Hobart have had it down there, but they're not hurting Clarence on the scoreboard. Yeah, in the, the North Hobart coaching staff right at the moment would be probably saying exactly that. Mm. We need to get a couple of goals to get some reward for effort but quite often the way it goes down the other end and Clarence oh. will kick a goal. So. Well, it happened last night in the AFL where Brisbane were, you know, their endeavour was fantastic, but uh, they just couldn't hurt them on the scoreboard as North Hobart have taken another strong mark and they drive it down now following the line. It's need a big, strong mark, and that's a cracker. Yeah, it's had Carmichael. the courage to strand in front and uh, was Carmichael. He's a fair way out. He's on 50. He'll take a pretty good kick from here. Top of the square. Here he goes. He, he might have heard the car club coach and he's put it right there as up they go. We need someone at the, the front and centres. Someone with deft touch. They're trying to almost ruck and maul that rugby style. North Hobart had three on to one, but it just evaded them as Hunter. He gets it out further afield towards Waller. Coming back in board uh, was Griggs. Tight contest. Blasky's there. Really strong tackle. It was Higgins who showed the courage to pick the ball up and a tackle. Got to be careful here. We know that the umpires are pretty keen to show their authority, so you don't want to give the ball up again. And it is uh, Higgins who's going to take the kick. There's a lead that it's ignored. Big pack forming right on the 10-metre square, pushing it down. Clarence again, they're holding firm. It is uh, 11 minutes gone, and the ball has been inside the uh, North Hobart attacking area but they just haven't got the great reward they are on two behinds Clarence yet to score yeah I think North probably need a little bit more movement when the ball's around the arc mm. they're all sort of just stationary oh take on a minute Bear let's have a look at this just as we speak uh, it was no style in that one it just happened to come free and I think that was Andrew Smith who was really good below his knees we'll have a look here on the Mood Food replay as uh, it came to him, he picked it up with deft touch, and here we go. You can see there he's in the right spot at the right time, and, and that's probably what has been lacking for North Hobart when the balls come in. It was that front and centre play, and he did a really good job. Yeah, there was some reward, reward for effort. I mean, obviously, we've had repeat, or North Hobart have had repeat inside go. 50s. Um, it's probably, I'd say, nearly 10 inside 50s to probably three, so some reward, reward for effort there, and, um, yeah, the coach would be a bit happier now. We certainly would as we just check 
the JMC Motor Car Company scoreboard. It is North Hobart, one goal, two, eight to Clarence yet to score. Clarence have had it, had it inside there 54 times, but they uh, haven't been able to score, and that's because of the miserly defensive work by the North Hobart defenders. Picking it up there was uh, a nice work by McCullum. You've got the good high... Oh, courage. look at the courage going back there was uh, Maxi Lamb. Gee whiz, he had no idea who was coming from behind him. As Not Maxi... Was that Maxi Lamb? I apologise. That was Sebastian Brown, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, played the wrong one. I apologise there. He started really well, hasn't he? Oh, dear, oh, dear. It was Maxi Lamb who's actually... I've got the wrong 14 playing for Clarence who came down from Brighton. And as, uh, we're just waiting for that boundary throw in. Good contest. Been let to go forward now. Comes out the back, but North Hobart are there to repel that uh, attack from Clarence. Good evasive uh, skills, but good tackle too by Ryan. He kept his eye on the hips and he didn't get seduced by looking at the eye. He's a rough and tumbler there. Was uh, good. I tell you what, he's got the old fashioned mullet and he's got a bit of work down the back and shaved up the top. He's a no-nonsense uh, railway track type of player there, Bear. He's straight ahead. Yeah, I, mean, I can't comment about people's hairstyles. <laughs> that's, uh, that's out there. Well, you and I have a look at you. You're frolically challenged and uh, <laughs> I've got the old silver tube. So between us, I tell you what, we would love a bit of work out the action like that young man. But anyway, it's back to the footy and it is uh, Matthew Noble for Clarence who uh, gets it out to Howard. They, they are uh, transferring that ball, but North Hobart have the numbers, and they do a good job to pick that up cleanly below their knees. It's just this kick in here, Bear, that concerns me. It's just <coughs> coming in with not a lot of system. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's safe going to that pocket, but even when I think Carmichael had it back through yep. the centre of the ground, if he had a wheeled and brought it out towards the terrace side, yep. you'd probably get an inside 50 a lot cleaner. So they're probably playing a little bit safe at the moment. Um, but, you know, it's a big stage. They wouldn't have played on this ground too many times. So yep. my message from the, to, or if I was the coach, I'd be yep. just trying to get the ball out to the top side a bit more. I reckon you could open Clarence up a bit. Yeah, you could do. And so although at the moment, then statistically, North Hobart, uh, they're all over at the minute, but they haven't hurt them as so much. So they're, they're hanging in there, Clarence. They only need, and here they are. They're doing really well down back. They're getting numbers back, and that's a good mark there by Bealey. Yeah, King to the same spot again, which is... That'd be the message, I think, from uh, Simon at quarter time, is just open your vision up, get your blinkers off a little yep. bit. Well, Mansfield, uh, Coach Mansfield would be happy with that. That's exactly what Clarence did. They took the punt, got it out to one of their designated kickers in Hurd, who's a beautiful left foot kick. And now they're going forward again as uh, North Hobart come out and they're tracking that one in McGann and he slips over at the crucial time and the umpire will come in and ball it up. So it's uh, 15 and a half, nearly 16 minutes gone in the under 16.5 grand final in the Crips, the Master Baker uh, STJFL final series. It's been a cracker of a day here, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you've been enjoying the coverage. Uh, we've enjoyed bringing it to you here from Duff TV as the ball goes forward, comes over the top. North Hobart leaning it out. That's excellent work there, I think, from Parsons, who gets it over toward the leading player in Smith, who we know can uh, be creative and get a goal. And uh, we can see on screen, we thank uh, the Clarence uh, Tyrite Parmic Fire Protection. Of course, have been great supporters of football over there. And uh, Die Grind, if you want uh, your concrete done, Die Grind are the ones. And of course, the, our last, our very dear friends who are us at Duff TV. So now, Clarence pushing on as they stream out. Long kick going down through the middle. I think nothing looks better there than when you see a defender run from that halfback flank. Yeah, you encourage them too, especially on this ground. You can get inside 50s quite frequently if you're prepared to take the game on, and that's what Clarence have done then. So, Clarence have the space. They're leading out now, although they haven't been forward very often as Ward picks it up. He screws that ball down, and Ward has got the goal. I'm a veteran of the Cabra at 58 years old, and I can't tell you how many times does that happen when one team has dominated, then all of a sudden they get the first forward entry bear and uh, they have maximised their efforts and Clarence have got a goal. Yeah, it started from the stoppage, yep. um, the, the boundary throw, and it can happen so often here at North Hobart. If, if you don't have enough pressure and keep the ball, you can get whack from one end to the other. And obviously Clarence were able to exit out the back of the stoppage and they took the game on and some quick ball movement. And um, that was an exceptional finish though as well.
Yeah, it certainly was. So Clarence, uh, they are one goal straight, six points. North Hobart, one, two, eight at the 17 and a half minute mark of the first quarter here in the grand final. Very, very nice kick there by Ned Ward. Ball coming back now. It's North Hobart. They're defending stoutly as they go into attack now. Good attempt to mark the ball. Forward they go. Hilda gets the handball over the top. Only a couple of minutes to go in the uh, first quarter of the grand final. They'd love another goal just for all the effort that they've put in. Get a handball back in board. Comes back out towards Ryan. He has been tackled, and that's a good reward for Clarence there. Good persistence, and uh, they're starting to get a bit of belief now after that goal, I think, there. Yeah, I suppose the Demons just before, they probably should have looked to get the footy over the line to have yep. a repeat stoppage, but they kept the ball alive, particularly at this stage of the quarter. Mm. Like, you just need to maintain the footy, slow it down a little bit, but obviously the young fella tried to keep it in, and as a result, now Clarence has got another inside 50. It's almost where you need... Uh, an older head on the younger shoulders and you need absolute composure in those sort of situations of course it will come as these boys learn the caper as uh, it was rounded now and gets it back in towards the centre of the ground which is an attacking position for the Roos and they're backing back well played by Lewis Lewis screws that ball around they're hugging that boundary line as uh, North Hobart uh, under a bit of pressure there as uh, McGann comes out he's been bottled up He's, uh, he's appealing, if not pleading, towards the umpire. He says, uh, give me something, but he's uh, not going to get anything from it. No, nah, that he wasn't. But North really have to be really accountable here. Like, there's a Clarence guy on the goal square that's got five or six metres. I mean, there's a minute to go. Um, Crucial, isn't it? Yeah. With only a minute to go, they've, uh, they've seen him now very creatively just sort of dropped off his man, and here comes that kick inside 50. Wow, we if uh, they could score with only seconds to go, that would be absolutely crucial. Pulls it in. I want to be careful here. The umpire says no. He's tried his hardest as uh, North Hobart pick it up, and that was Brown. Brown goes straight down the high little diddle, bouncing end over end. Oh, wow, big contest there. And Clarence come away with it. They're moving the ball very freely now. Good handball over the top. That was uh, Ward trying to f come back inside, and he's got it again. Lovely high hands and a good tackle by Ryan. Coming back out was Pullen. He's been dispossessed. 50-50 ball. Brown, and he just uh, decides to kick it off with only seven seconds left. That one's uh, come a little bit too high, and the free kick will go towards Bealey. Bealey kicks it. But the siren's gone before the big Dukes have taken that one from Colby Whitelaw. And it is quarter time here in the under 16 and a half grand final in the STJFL Crips the Master Baker grand final, the last one of the day. We hope you're enjoying the cover. It is North Hobart, one goal, two eight. Clarence, one goal straight. And uh, for North Hobart, who got the first goal, it was uh, Andrew Smith with that uh, left foot uh, hook over his shoulder and for Clarence it was Ned Ward similarly uh, on that creative bake and uh, who were some of your best players there Bear in that first quarter? Oh, I thought for the Demons I thought Ryan and Carmichael um, were probably the better two I thought uh, Sebastian Brown across halfback was also very good so I'd probably try and play with Keegan Ryan a bit more forward Yep. Um, I'd probably look to put Carmichael on ball I think he'd be really suited in this type of game playing in the midfield just allowing him to get some centre clearances and I'll try and isolate Ryan um, deep forward. OK, well, there you have it. So I think that Clarence will probably all but be sort of happier and if not relieved to say, well, fellas, we, we've got a lot better football in us and here we are, we're only two points behind. So, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you're enjoying uh, the coverage of this grand final. Uh, we are going to take a quick break now and we'll be back with the second quarter very shortly. Welcome back to uh, North Hobart Oval. It has been an absolutely splendid day, perfect uh, spring weather, although the wisdom of the STJFL, very, very forward-thinking uh, football community, have decided to put the uh, floodlights on just so that uh, these kiddies get the best of the conditions. So I went down and had a little listen to uh, Supercoach uh, Harris, and uh, he was a little bit disappointed uh, with their quarter. He, he, he thought that they probably wasted a few opportunities and got caught 
uh, with Clarence from, from running from behind. So he, was a, he, he wasn't too gruff. He was just explaining that. And then, like a good coach, he gave them the leadership to tell them how he would like to set up in the next bit of play. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out. But it was a very positive vibe down there. And, and I got across just briefly to uh, Clarence. And uh, although they were kind of disappointed with the amount of ball that they had, they think there's a lot more improvement that they can bring to the table there. Yeah, I mean, Clarence have got a lot of upside. I mean, I personally think North Hobart dominated the territory battle in the first quarter. So there's a lot of improvement to come from Clarence. All right, so we are underway with uh, the second quarter. Here he is, Mr. No Nonsense, as uh, Campbell Good goes straight over the top to one of the creative running players in Bingham. Bingham goes direct. Oh, big one arm Duke went up. Couldn't quite bring him in. That was uh, Higgins trying to tackle now. Here is crucial to hold that ball into the 50 when you get it down there. And rushing back is uh, Rollins. And he has uh, been a very good player in that first quarter as well, Bear. Yeah, I mean, he's had a fair bit of footy. That was an exceptional mark. He's lost his boot here. But... Oh, there he goes. He just goes with the old sock. Very dangerous kick. And look at the turnover. There were three ruse to one demon. And it opens up the play as Clarence take possession. But good defensive work. They still have the numbers, but they can't get their hands on the ball. North Hobart pick it up through Griggs and just bludgeon that one back up through the centre. I thought they were just a little bit lucky there, Bear. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be slingshot from, from yes. the turnover across half-back, so it's a very dangerous kick on, on any ground, but particularly in North Hobart Oval. All right, so the ball comes back out towards Roland, who now has two shoes on, which is very handy because it's a little bit soft underfoot and leading out. Gee whiz, that's a very strong mark. Good hands by uh, Ryan. Ryan goes back in. Uh, oh, just keeping it in was very, very clever. Nice play by Higgins. Comes around the body. Well worked. It's uh, Tompkins who gets it for Clarence. Comes back out towards Hurd. He gives a bit of a give and, give and go. They're under a good amount of pressure, and Bingham swings that back in. It's almost like, oh, look at that. Running with the flight was uh, Higgins with no fear for what was going to happen to him as Williams is at the bottom, and Williams goes again. He just goes without it. Backing up is Smith, who we know could kick a goal. North Hobart, oh, they both all but spoil each other. They swing around, was Keegan Ryan, but uh, the umpire said that one's hit the post. And again, it's just a not great system, that last kick into the forward line there. No, again, but that was still a good contest. Absolutely. Um, I'm liking Keegan Ryan being closer to goal. I think he looks very dangerous. If they can give him some isolation, I reckon he hit the scoreboard very soon. Yeah, I really, that, that's how I would have seen it. When there was two on one, I think it's almost sacrificial, but I think that other player needs to lead his man out, and then on the flight of the ball, that's when you turn back in front and centre. Yeah, I know what that's like, uh, playing my career <laughs> with Robert Devine. I was always a sacrificial uh, lead, so just got to play your role, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. But you'd, you'd much rather a, a medallion round your neck than not. So Absolutely. that's what's going to win it. To just take your man out, but then you can get on the bike and get front and centre. As uh, There's been an infringement in play, and uh, Clarence are going to take this free kick. Sun is uh, really coming down, and whereas yesterday you were up here uh, with a couple of coats on, today you had to make sure you had the 30-plus the block out as Tompkins takes the kick. Excellent, accurate kick into the middle of the ground. He comes out towards the attacking zone and again like before where North Hobart turned it over. Conversely, Clarence have done the deed this time but at least they're attempting to take the game on as Clarence, through a succession of good handballs via Noble, gets it into their attacking zone. It's McGann who led that uh, play and he's been rewarded because uh, he was held without the ball. McGann again. Good skills via the foot. Comes out to Marsh. Marsh sizing up his options. Not a lot on. So he goes towards that uh, pack and the lead out of Keegan Ryan. Again, if that's going to be a little bit predictable, let's see, maybe Ryan what start a little bit closer to goal bear, so he, he runs out and those other forwards try and give him space to run into. Yeah, potentially, but I see the problem at the moment is the ball's just rebounding straight back out of inside inside 50. So Keegan's role is not to, obviously you want him to apply some type of pressure, yep. but 
the guys know where the ball's going to go, so they need to be making sure they get in at his feet and really put the pressure on. Right at the moment, the last five or six times it's gone in there, it's come straight back out because there's just not enough pressure for the North Hobart forwards. OK, so there's plenty to work on. Very even contest. It is North Hobart, one goal's 2-8. Clarence, one goal straight. And uh, Clarence have a big opportunity now as they have it inside their 50. As the ball bounces one way, then back over the other. And some reward for being to the ball first. And Blair Wood will take that one. Nice kick by Wood. Gets it out towards Rollins, who's been absolutely dominant in this uh, second quarter. He's very neat by, by his feet, isn't he? Like, he doesn't waste too many, too many possessions. And the interesting thing as well, I mean, that possession that he, he had was deep in defence. He's, he's running really hard, both uh, forward and back. And uh, there is the turnover affected by Clarence. They've, they've chipped in nicely and taken that mark. Goodbye foot out towards Noble. He's getting plenty of the ball too. Not the greatest kick. He's uh, got three on to one. North Hobart now, if they've got three there, they're almost playing kick to kick. You could almost see that going to happen, yeah. wasn't you? They've had the spares, and they've just can't, can't do that long kick there. You, you've got to go to where the men are, not just kick for distance. Well, I think the boys off half-back just need a bit more composure, lower their eyes a little yep. bit, as yep. we said in the first quarter, take the blinkers off. Yep. Um, because you don't want to play a game of tennis yep. back and forth to the same spot, so... Yeah, it's been a good contest this quarter, but they just need to have a look where they're going. And the umpire's just saying to these guys, just take your time, fellas. There's a green card. And they might, they might be going to have a bit of a spell here, there. Yeah, interesting. You can see here, both got, a, they've got him round the neck. And he says, well, you're not going to do that on my watch. You're just going to have a spell and think about how you're going to play your footy. And uh, away they go. So this will make the, it a bit more interesting in that there'll be a few more players, but they've uh, interchanged and they'll just uh, go and temper their spirits. So now we're back into the contest. Goes back in towards centre-half forward for Clarence. Ball's in dispute. Coming through hard was Reed. Gets it over. Oh, they've got two men. That, uh, they all but spoil each other. They need to be able to have a clean pick-up. That's Max Lamb, who's a... Pretty good kick normally on his left side of his body. I've seen a lot of him over the years, and that one has gone out of bounds. So the, the Clarence Tyrite Parmic Diagrine Ruse uh, will be uh, pretty happy with how things are going at the minute. Yeah, I mean, we've got the two best defensive sides for the year um, on yep. the big stage, so there's no surprise that it's such a low scoring game at the moment. You never feel safe when the game's like this, do you? You never do. No, you're relying on the opposition to make a mistake, potentially so you score. So um, Clarence obviously caused the turnover here again. So this is a very crucial kick for goal. See here, and it was Boersboom who just played in front. He read that one really well. And uh, Ryan Boersboom will go back and have a shot. Stuttering, left footer. Kicks it towards the goal, and it's gone from right to left as far as he was concerned. And we can hear in the ex, uh, effects, Mike, uh, the crowd to the right are all red and white, and they are absolutely cock a hoot because uh, that's only their second attempt at goal, and it's been two goals straight. They move on to 12 points. North Hobart, one goal, two, eight. As we have a look at the kicking style here of Ryan Boersboom on the Mood Food replay, that was a very nice kick there. You'd be very happy with that. Yeah, and as a coach, I actually like watching the player rather than the reaction of the crowd or the goal the goal umpire. And as soon as that hit the boot, he was, he was declared he through. <laughs> he so. did look pretty happy, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, it was a good kick for goal. Good ball drop, square shoulders, again, low hands. Not a lot can go wrong when you kick like that. So uh, all of a sudden now... Uh, Clarence, uh, four points to the good, even after what has been, I would have thought, a more dominant performance by the Demons, but uh, they haven't got the score on the board yet. So Clarence now, building belief, they go inside 50 again. Oh, there's a couple of chances there, just goes begging. Under a bit of pressure now is uh, Coburn. And at the bottom of the pack, he's been pushed and gets another one to go on with by Maxi Lamb, a little bit frustrated. Oh, and he gives one after. It's got to be downfield as far as I can see. And that's the way the umpire has uh, seen it. So North Hobart will take that kick. Going out towards Brown. Brown picks it up. Excellent kick. Further afield towards Bingham. 
Bingham with pace. He's been mowed down. Good chase by the, the defenders by Clarence. Goes towards Tompkins. And Tom's, Tompkins kicks that out. And Clarence take the mark. Gee, that was, that was again, from a coaching perspective, Bear, you love it when you see those rundowns, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And th that's what's created the turnover. North have obviously taken intercept mark here. So it'd be nice if they try and switch the footy. They go short because they have the spare man. Nothing's on inside. Taking their time, looking around. So they just go the big Hail Mary. Up she goes. And uh, that's an easy one to defend. And it's a good punch too by Clarence. Comes out back again towards centre-half forward. Good pick up by the Demons, but they can't get some space through a succession of chain of handballs. It comes out towards Marsh. Downfield. There's been a whistle, and I can see the hand. Oh, and he's been pushed again. He's 50. That's another 50, surely. And that's going to go right at... That was very undisciplined play there by the Ruse. And if I was north, I'd be walking away from yeah. the Clarence boys at the moment. And, and that's what they're doing now. They're trying to tell you can see uh, Carmichael was a little bit fired up. And the rest of his teammates have said, let's leave it alone. Let's just kick the old sausage and put that one through. And North Hobart drilled that one through as we see the goal kicker coming towards the boundary line. Uh, nice work. We see the handball. And it was, um, it was Marsh, I think. Yeah, Maxi Marsh, who was the recipient. And he uh, has put that one straight through. And... Dear, oh dear, I don't know what happened. It was a bit of a brain fade there from the Ruse. It was a bit uncharacteristic on how they'd played the game so far there. Yeah, you'd be disappointed if you're the Clarence coach. I think the last sort of five or six minutes, Clarence have had all the momentum. So um, that gives North a sniff. And now, obviously, they're back in front. So so it is North Hobart, 2-2-14. Two, two, Clarence, two goals straight, 12. It is two points the difference here in the STJFL uh, under 16.5 grand final for 2019. Clarence have the ball. It is 11 and a half minutes gone. They go the short pass. That's a good lead and a strong mark. Well taken there by Maxi Lamb. He's a known goal kicker. I reckon this will be a bit too far for him. He's undecided on what to do. He goes the kick. Strong play. Oh, up they go. Not a bad distance on that one, but I think it was always going to be on his limit. And North Hobart were able to parry that one over the top for the minor. Yeah, it's tough to kick goals from that pocket over there, so that was actually not a bad effort. It was good, especially when you're on the wrong side of your body. And uh, North Hobart taking their time to bring that one in. It's uh, Bingham. A lot of players getting free, so that means someone's prepared to run. Conversely, someone isn't. And that was uh, Rollins, who I think has had a stellar second quarter on his own back is trying to get North Hobart's momentum going forward as the ball, I was about to say, was close to the line. It's uh, gone over and another boundary throw in with uh, 12 and a half minutes gone in the STJFL under 16 and a half grand final for 2019. Yeah, Rollins has been exceptional this second quarter. He was, he was quite lively in the first quarter, but I reckon he's had half a dozen touches. Yeah, at least, as that was Blair Wood at the bottom. He was... Uh, beset upon uh, in fact that was a Saurus and uh, he wasn't going to get through that and the umpire had no alternative but to have another stoppage trying to force their way through here held without the ball probably a little bit too long and Clarence are going to take the free kick that was Reed getting it further in toward looking for Lamb as he he went up there Lamb's normally uh, good on the lead and it was a uh, Good defensive work there by Coburn to come over the top and a good spoil as he just affected that punch. Yeah, it was exceptional. Um, the Clarence guy was in the position of mark, so it was good from Coburn to apply that pressure to get another stoppage. The umpire says, look, I wouldn't mind if you did that one again. So uh, the boundary throw-in will be affected again. Here we go. In it comes. Clarence go towards the ball. It was Lamb at the back. It's a good handball over the top. Barely, but North Hobart have the numbers. They go directly down the middle of the ground. Good spoil applied by uh, Ryan, who's come out from deep into attack. Comes out towards him now. Well played by Butler. Screws that ball around. Good contest. Made his way to the front, did Williams. Good effort. Woods over there. Williams comes back again. He's trying to push his way forward but the 
Clarence defenders are having none of that as they just try and get it out and add valuable meterage and so they can get some composure and they'll be able to just take their breath and uh, re-evaluate and it's time to man up. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see if North Hobart can get their hands on this one and, and go towards what is now quite an open looking forward line. Yeah, just that last entry there to Ryan, the boys just did enough to main, maintain enough pressure to be able to get an inside 50 again. So that's something the coach would be really happy with at half time that the boys are starting to put a bit more pressure on because obviously Clarence have been able to slingshot from half back quite regularly. So into pack uh, an attempt to try and tell the umpire that he marked it but didn't almost uh, clean bold. That was almost like the delivery that Stark bowled last night with a beautiful in-swinger that bowled Maxi Lamb but it comes back up towards North Hobart. They're going inside their 50 again. Overrunning it was Williams. Oh, oh good hard contest. Fair play. That was nice. Uh, Archie Hurd goes on to his uh, left side. Both of those two gladiators are picking themselves up off the turf. They had uh, their only eyes for the ball. Really good burrowing in, a little bit too high. I have to say, I don't know what else he was going to do there. We have a look at that. That was a pretty high contact. And I think that young man, that was Blakey Wood, is just going to come off and have a spell. And that's a fair call too, as Clarence get their hands on it. Very, very high one comes out and keeping their eye on the ball was the Donato. Donato goes towards the leading player. Can't quite uh, bring it in. That one's been deemed high again. Well, I guess one thing, Bear, is that uh, call is consistent. Yeah, very consistent. <laughs> Close to the boundary line, North Hobart doing a good job there to bottle that one up and it will be a boundary throw in. I, I, I have to say, normally what's been happening for the player that puts their head down and Burrow is in shouldn't probably get the encouragement and the reward, but anyway, yeah, I think only played as they see it. I would have let both those last two I think go. so. Like, yep. Let the kids play. Let them play. Oh, oh that's yeah. coming over. That was a pretty ugly tackle, to be quite honest, as uh, Buchanan came over the top. It's probably David and Goliath as well. And uh, showing good courage there was Blair Wood to hold his feet. And he was rewarded with that one. They go the short kick. It needs to be accurate. And it is. Comes to the loose player. Now they're on. If they can get their hands on it. This is the kick. Long one. Deep. Backing back. Clarence have it in herd. I think it is. And it takes a nice mark. You just need to lower his eyes. Yep. Inside 50 there. There's a couple of options from the North Hobart boys coming at him. But... That's better. So Butler, Butler, he has heard the uh, coach of the club. He, he did lower his eyes and he found Griggs. I thought Griggs was going to have a shot. He realised it was uh, a little bit too far. So he decided to get it in as quickly as he can while there was only a two on two because Clarence, to their credit there, have been good on getting numbers back for that last kick. Yeah, I mean, obviously for the whole game, they've been really, really exceptional at that. So this is where Clarence will want to really... Um, close this down whereas North want to try and open it up a little bit. They pick it up screwing it around was Britain but uh, he goes a bit too much he, got, uh, he dug the old studs in with the left boot and kicked it up but threw for the minor score and that sees North Hobart go on to 2-3-15 to Clarence 2-1-13 so two points the difference in the grand final here in the under 16 and a half division this is STJFL football and it's been a fantastic day here at North Hobart Oval. Not a breath of wind, the sun's still shining, the, the lights are on just in case. And that's a really strong mark there, Bear. What about that one by Andrew Smith? It's exceptional. Andrew Smith, oh, he showed his skill when he kicked the goal um, from the ground. Then he took that mark and leading out uh, was Carmichael. And uh, the kick was perfect to his advantage, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was good movement from Carmichael as well. So here I think he just needs to take his 30 seconds, just churn the clock down. Whether he kicks a goal or not, it's going to make it pretty hard for Clarence to kick a goal on the rebound. So he just needs to show some composure, go through his routine. Carmichael, he kicks it for a minute there. I thought it was going out to the right and it worked its way from right to left. And as the boys have got around him and given him a pat on the toot, they are absolutely thrilled that he drilled that one, and, and to be quite blunt, I thought from that passage of play from North Hobart, that was probably their best 
um, forward entry. It went yeah, into it was. good system. I mean, it was a great mark from Smith from the uh, the Clarence kick outside 50. So, but then he showed some composure, lowered his eyes. Carl Michael came at the footy, which I think going forward in the second half, North Hobart would have to do that a lot more rather than just blaze away. So, um, it was a really good finish too by Carl Michael. So we're getting close to half time. 20 seconds left. Good tap by the Demons to the advantage, but coming in now, that was Heard. He goes the handball, then he runs off. That's what you like to see at the kiddies, uh, not just one possession. You either give and go or give and protect the, uh, the person with the ball. They're the most important player on the ground. As Clarence come in, attacking the ball was McCullum. McCullum, they need a mark, North Hobart. No, oh, beautiful work by Thomas McGann, because if they got that mark, they could have had a shot on goal. So it is half time in the STJFL Crips, the Master Baker Grand Final in the under 16 and a half division. We find ourselves with North Hobart, 3 3 21, in front of Clarence, 2 1 13. And uh, for North Hobart, it is Carmichael who got that goal just a few minutes ago, Marsh and Smith. And uh, for Clarence, Ward and Borsboom there. Yeah, it was it? I think Clarence probably in the middle of that quarter, probably with the best side. It's just North were able to kick those two late goals, which is probably against the momentum in that quarter. So um, I think both coaches are going at half time, really believing they can win the game. So um, it's just going to be a matter of who shows the composure, who uses the footy better when it goes inside 50, because I don't think it's going to be a very high scoring or It's not obviously, it's five goals for the half. So um, yeah, I mean, North have to stop Clarence's uh, rebound from inside North 50. I think they get the ball slingshotted out. Yep. Um, so that's how what I think the message that um, Clarence would be saying, this is what we do really well. So yep. um, they'll be being told to take the game on a bit more and get inside 50 quickly because when they've been able to do that, they actually have scored. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a very even game. It's a good standard of game. Yeah, it certainly is. And I'm sure that Coach Harris will amplify that uh, forward entry is when we take our time and pinpoint to the advantage of the leading player that's what we want to see so ladies and gentlemen uh, we'll take a break now here's a kindly word from our sponsors and we'll be back with the second half very very shortly so welcome back ladies and gentlemen to what will be an intriguing second half of the under 16 Point five grand final. It's Andrew Silver Fox Hop with Richard the Bear Robinson uh, alongside me. Uh, Bear, um, you were down in the rooms. What have you got to report? Yeah, the, the clear message was about lying your eyes when you're going inside 50. So um, North start doing that, then they'll give themselves more chance to score. Okay, so it is uh, crucial now. But uh, Clarence would obviously love to get this uh, first one. A very closely fought game down in and under Clarence get the handball out North Hobart at the bottom of the pack through the agency of Bingham further afield going into attack now backing back McGann can't take it gets a good handball across they just push that one out and Lux of fortune really didn't look but uh, got it out of that danger area and North Hobart going in towards centre half forward no one was there to take the mark. Clarence have plenty of numbers back there as it comes across, overrunning it, and that time was uh, heard. Goes in and uh, shows good spirit to make a second effort of it. Tackled then, I think, probably slightly without it. He was very determined to get over that one, was a young herd, and uh, will get a boundary throw in. Archie Heard, Duncan Herds. Yes, eldest son. One of... Uh, the three lads. Of course, uh, Hurdy, uh, he, if he likes to regale the story, one of the very few men of Clarence to score 200 in the cricket. Yeah, he's a big barrel chested fellow. Yeah. Good sportsman. Yeah, exceptional. And a good fella. Uh, hello to our very dear friends who are watching and going close towards the boundary line. And while we're on the quick cheerios, I want to send one out to my uh, youngest son, Henry, who just texted in and he said, what a great job you and I are doing, Bear. So thank you to Henry, who's watching this telecast up there in the Gold Coast. I know you'd like to be here to help your dear old dad, but uh, we send you our best wishes. Thanks, Henry. So now North Hobart over the ball. 
That's Williams. And that's the great thing, isn't it, here, Bear, that these kids are not only here in front of a good crowd, but this is going out live stream. So we've got people who would love to be here who can't, as the big mark, uh, through, through the live stream, through Duff TV, we're bringing STJFL football to the world. And uh, we think that's a great thing as oh, the ball fantastic. comes over. Certainly is. Sorry to over talk as the ball goes through a little bit of action there. It was, was Higgins. He's well. I love that run from half back flank. Saw that uh, his teammate needed him and was close to the line and uh, a ball in. Yeah, back to that. It's really good for the kids, isn't it, to know that this is avail, avail to them. Yeah, not only good for the kids. I think it's good for the kids' families or, yes. or grandparents who, you know, might be able to get to the game and um, just, you know, it's back even like back in the days when the State League was broadcast on ABC, they're yep. the things that I really miss as, yes. as not just a coach but a supporter. Like Absolutely. Things like this create interest for the competition as well and you can follow these young players throughout their careers and I think it's really good that the, these grand finals are, are streamed live. It certainly is and, and on, on that, dear old Duff who's been doing footy I think down in Tasmania in the STJFL for about 140 years he's got the footage of your young Jack Revolts and all these young fellas running around and here they are on the big stage the biggest names in football so it's great to follow their their journey yeah and I'm sure there'll be guys that have played today that are going to end up playing AFL football and it's just as you say it's good to reflect back on you know when they're young men whoa there's a Hard contest is coming in there was uh, Hunter, but standing tall was Andrew Smith, showing some good courage there. So it was a good contest. 50 51 as the ball coming out here on their heels, trying to evade one. Gee, that was good play by Brown, actually. I thought he was a little bit slow, but gee, he just pushed his way through. He wheeled his way forward. As now North Hobart, a bit of a soccer off the ground. Oh, they got the numbers not keeping their feet a little bit slippery, as it will do as it gets a little bit towards later in the day. As Clarence hiked, hiked that one up, I think uh, has been dealt with after, and the free kick will be going back to them in the last line of defence. So uh, Clarence now just sizing up their options. This is Bealey. Goes the short pass on the defensive side. Had to be accurate, and he is. They're going to go back, and they do so. Keeping possession, not a good kick. Good pick up, though. Go on to the wrong side, which is the left side. North Hobart are in front. Bingham couldn't quite uh, bring it down. There's a shot on goal, but the free kick has been paid for was that a kick or a trip there bear i didn't quite see that one i was looking downfield i'd say he's called the tackle slip down yep onto the knee all Just right so uh, yeah the free kick now there to howard yeah that's how he's paid it so how to fix that kick oh there's a strong mark excellent work now and uh, tom mccullum he's been very good above his uh, head bit of a jack in the box and talking of strong Thomas McGann, I've really liked his work across half-back. Yeah, there's a couple of boys across the half-back line. Obviously, Brown has been really good as yep. well. So. so North Hobart looking inside. Five minutes gone. Very low-scoring game. But anything can break open. You never know with these games. All of a sudden, because of the nature of it is, they get a few clearances. It's a holding the ball. Good tackle again by Tom McCullum. And he's really coming into the game as we're going to have a look here on the Mood Food replay. He was tracking the ball and he kept his eye transfixed on the player who, who had it and he pulled him down into the tackle. Yeah, both McCullum and Whitelaw, I think, have been, been really good all day. So promising signs for them. Certainly, certainly are as Clarence get it towards the true centre-half forward position. Hurd's there, tries to affect the kick, but he's pulled off the ball just as he goes to try and get it. It's North Hobart. They get it out towards Higgins. Now it's a free-flowing attempt, and Clarence go in to attack. One-handed attempt to mark, running hard at the ball. That's Ward, who has already got one goal, and the boundary line is there first, and it's beaten him over. And uh, Clarence are uh, well into attack. North just have to make sure they get arm across at this stoppage. Absolutely crucial, isn't it, that uh, no one's loose. It's, it's not a defender's right to, to get free. Is picking the ball up and the barrel right down the middle of the ground. No nonsense there as Ryan is leading out. 
There's three on one, and the umpire says it's come out to the advantage of Clarence, so play it on, and they do so with interest, trying to lead their way out, providing the uh, good block. But uh, they've defended nicely again, have North Hobart. They're standing up to the challenges that Clarence are uh, putting at them. Good handball. You know this man is going to go onto his left, but he goes unselfishly uh, towards that area of danger. But Sebastian Brown, again, as he's done to all time, keeps his eyes on the ball and takes another strong mark. Oh, and the kick, though, is a little bit errant. And it uh, goes to a three-on-one. Here's danger as they go out. North Hobart have got the numbers. They get a handball. It's almost, it's interesting to observe here, Bear, how... Uh, they've got spare numbers, both teams, but in different areas of the ground. Yeah, I think the North Fords need to roll up a little bit higher. Yep. They, they're just giving the Clarence guys, you know, the best position. So yep. I think there's no point, for instance, sitting in deep in the forward line. You've got to come up and actually make it at least a two-on-one. Yep. So there is uh, Lamb. We uh, kind of knew he was going to, if you know uh, a little bit about Max, he's a uh, left foot and he was trying to swing around, wasn't he? And it was good defensive work. You've got to know your play you're on. And so now that's uh, good. He goes the big kick. I tell you what, uh, Barry gives it a good old roost. And it comes out good front and centre by the Demons as they go into their attacking side. they got the numbers. And gee whiz, a couple of boys are sliding over. Maybe they've got those thin moulded boots. Yeah, I think you think coming to North Hobart this time of the year, the moulded soles is probably the boot of choice, but I actually think screw-ins mm. even though it's September, because the ground is quite soft underneath. Yep. Yeah, certainly, and there's, a, there's games on it yesterday. It was quite inclement, plenty of rain, and uh, it's held up incredibly well, but certainly it is soft underfoot. And uh, with uh, nine minutes gone in this third quarter, it is North Hobart, 3-3-21, Clarence 2-1-13. Very interesting game. It's a, an absolute arm wrestle, and I, I'm not really sure which way it's going to go. So North Hobart are into attack. As they clutch that one, they kick it in towards the goal, the opportunist goal. I'm not sure. I think that might have been... Was that Carmichael? It certainly was. As we see here driven in quickly and I like it when the ball comes in quick it's very hard for the defenders to set up it's that mystery chaos ball and uh, he took advantage of 50-50 and Lockie Carmile has slotted it through for his second goal yeah he's been really good he's probably been North's most consistent player over the course of the game so as you say he played in front took the most of his opportunity and was able to put some scoreboard pressure on so I think North have probably been a bit cleaner this this quarter I think their hands in close have been really good which enables a bit more cleaner inside 50 because you're not under as much pressure so very handy goal to the Demons as they pick that one up across half back they've got to defend stoutly now bit of confusion a lack of talk hard tackle that was uh, Blasky who really ran down. It goes into the attacking area, running back with ice to the ball was McGann. He's been a cracker. I've loved the way he's gone about it. And Brown picks it up. He is a strong uh, fellow. He's the sort of player bear I just wouldn't mind playing alongside. You know, he's giving it his all. As North Hobart, they're under pressure, but they're holding up to it at the moment. They team up nicely, and they get that kick out, out to Griggs. Griggs taking his time. With a lovely lead and pass, very accurate by foot, as Williams takes that mark as they get their, excuse me, get their breath. They go inside fifth. Up they go. Good attempt to mark from uh, about four back was Howard. He can't do so. That ball now is in dispute. It goes towards the line. And I think North Hobart worked their way out of that one very, very nicely, Bear. Yeah, as I said before, I think North have been the better side this quarter. So they just seem to be finding the right people in the right moments um, yeah. but so, I'm liking the look of both Brown and McGann. Yeah they've been good haven't they? I think that they've not only repelled those attacks but they've, they've been crucial in, in setting up the most promising forward thrust that North Hobart have had as uh, that handball has come out it ends up in the safe hands of Williams who's been one of their more creative players nice uh, hands by Clarence by Boersboom who's very uh, skilled back into a disputed area Higgins picks it up 
nice and low to the ground very strong through the core of his body Clarence they set up nicely front and centre that was Griggs Griggs evading one then another goes back around screws it over towards Bingham Bingham gets it in towards the goal it's running end over end and they can't quite hold it on that's not a bad result for North Hobart a ball in uh, as deep as forward as you can go. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how they set up in this ruck contest. You probably need to open it up a little bit. I reckon there's too many um, North boys around the ball here. Yep. Like, give yourself an opportunity to work with a bit of space. So it is the North Hobart who, through the agency oh. there of Rollins, who screw that one over. A more but might have been a free kick I there, the way the game... There the way the game has been played, but uh, it isn't paid, so it uh, comes out to the advantage of Clarence, and it's Ward who picks that one up. He goes back inside. A bit of candy is uh, shown there. Very effective. Nicely played. Noble. Good contest, and he did a, done a really good job to stay on his feet there. Well, this is going to be a crucial kick. That is danger as it's off the side of the boot, and Clarence are there first. Great tackling by North of what was... A very 50-50 ball at best as they pick the next one up. Going hard at it was Butler, and he's deemed to be uh, holding the ball, and that's given some momentum now to Jack Lewis for Clarence. Lewis uh, finds the man a little bit free. It's uh, Blasky, and he's going to go back and have a shot on goal. He uh, not sure in the distance, so he tries to get a few metres. Oh, gone up uncontested was Lamb. That ball came in it didn't get uh, the distance that they thought it was and Lamb was at the front of the pack as we see it coming in again in between uh, two rivals and it's just fallen right into his lap and he's going to go out from 10 metres to have a shot on goal taking his time is Lamb normally a very very good kick for goal and he's made no mistake and out of nothing, Clarence have got a very, very useful goal. And uh, that has brought them back to within, what's that, uh, I think it's about seven or eight points now, Bear. So that's really closed the game up. Yeah, I mean, obviously we spoke before about wanting to switch to footy, but there's times where you, oh. you want to do it and there's times you just shouldn't do it. And obviously the North boys switching the footy, you know, a minute before that goal was kicked. Probably wasn't the greatest option, put, our, put, put North Hobart under pressure. Um, well, it was a huge amount of pressure too. Not only was it the switch, but it was a... He was under pressure and sort of went, went the barrel. I mean, I'm just trying to be critical to kiddies. They're, they're trying to do their best, but yet it uh, wasn't probably the, the right option. You can see now uh, from the very, very clear pictures coming to you from Duff TV, the intent on the eyes of Clarence. They have got the bit between the teeth now as they play as like two bulls coming into the contest. As North Hobart certainly know they're in a competition now as Wood tries to go hard for the ball, running end over end. It's close. In fact, it has gone over as North Hobart are 4 3 27, Clarence 3 1 19. 15 minutes gone, third quarter. This is the grand final of the under 16 and a half. Grand final for Sydney STJFL. Uh, brought to you by Crips the Master Bake, baking bread in Tasmania since 1878 and uh, what about that uh, bread we had at uh, half time there that was beautiful wasn't it and we have to thank Cripps for that the McWilliams loaf Paul Godomsky do yes, we have to thank him yeah, personally nah, Paul personally delivered we know he's had a busy schedule but he's yep. dropped that by so thank you for that one Paul Man North the people. Yeah, oh, absolutely that was Billy Griggs oh, comes great. forward and North Hobart take the mark and I think that's uh, young Smith isn't it yes, he's got the sort of wide shoulders slight but uh, he's been a goal kicker, and that was a good mark. I, I like him above his uh, head. Really good then. Good clean hands. Now he just has to finish the work off. Deliberately coming towards the goals. Here he goes. Right foot up. He got good purchase on it. Thought it was going to swing back, but it just was pushed across the goals and through for the minor score. So, North Hobart, 4-4-28. Clarence, 3 one Of course, the score brought to us by the JMC Motor Car Company. Coming back in, Clarence, favoured by that bounce. It's gone straight back through the centre of the ground. They're under a bit of pressure now as North Hobart picked that one up. 
They get the handball out, but he'd been pinged for holding the ball. And I think uh, Lamb is going to have another shot on goal. Campbell good. He thought he uh, affected the handball, but the umpire deemed that he was he was just about to be swung around, and before he hit the ground, he, he handballed off. So Lamb is going to have another shot on goal, and gee whiz, he can make a name for himself here. He's, his last kick was a very, very effective. So here he goes, Lamb. You can see what's in front of him. He just crosses the 50, pushing in towards about the 30. Left foot up. Just doesn't quite get onto that one. Very accurate, but not final. He's got a bit, a bit of cramp. cramp. Maybe that's why it uh, didn't go the distance. That's a concern in the third quarter, getting cramp. Yeah, it is. And uh, she hurts a bit too when you get the cramp. Anyway, it is Wood now. He's been pretty good, Campbell. Good. Comes to the front of the pack. Picked up by Ryan. Ryan goes out towards the wing. It's a very close contest. Smith picks it up. Tries to handball back inside. Trying to affect a bit of run on the game. This game is here to be won. It is eight points the difference. Grand final. No second places and not coming back from here. It's uh, one and a half minutes left. Would you roll a spare behind the ball for the last minute and a half? Absolutely. No doubt about that. So Clarence have got it. They go the handball. Need a pick up now. They've got uh, three defenders chasing. Oh, but well worked. And North Hobart to settle down and take this one. They come out a little bit wider towards uh, Rollins, who had such a wonderful second quarter. Moves it quickly. Time is against them. They've got uh, one minute ten. It is Bingham. Bingham goes inside now. That's probably not a bad spot to be. This is the crucial kick. Clarence have got the numbers back. A minute left. Can someone come out and duke this one up? It goes to the front of the pack. Heard the umpire. They play it on. They're held in the play. And it's going to be a ball up. They need clean possession from this ball up. As the uh, rucks come in and nominate. It's Harry Williams. He says, I'll take it. Oh, he's got it into a dangerous position. Crucial tackle. Slipping over there was uh, Rollins as he was about to try and affect that kick towards the goal. He can't get it off. This is good defensive work by Clarence. I think that was uh, Harrison Reed, And they've been able to slow that one down. So 20-odd seconds left. Up it goes. The bottom of the pack, it's Clarence trying to hold this one in. They've all but done enough. Only 15 seconds left. North got two players behind the ball. Yep. Two points. Don't know if it's going to come to them. Here they go. Just about to pick it up, try and handball. Have a look at Clarence. They come out in numbers. They uh, go forward, but the siren uh, has sounded. And it is three-quarter time here, ladies and gentlemen, in the under-16 and a half STJFL Crips Grand Final. It is uh, North Hobart 4-4-28, Clarence 3-2-20. Uh, Carmichael for North Hobart has got two goals, Marsh and Smith. And for Clarence, Ward, Glam and Borsboom. And Bear, uh, some of your better players? Uh, for the North Hobart, I think uh, Lachlan Rollins has been really good. Um, I'm liking the work of Brown and McGann from behind the ball. Yep. Um, Keegan Ryan, I think, probably goes unnoticed. He, he probably had half a dozen touches again that quarter. Uh, for the Roos, I'm liking the look of Whitelaw. Yes. Um, Max Lamb looked live with that quarter as yeah, well. Yeah, he did. So. Tommy McCullum came into the game, didn't he, uh, in that particular quarter. And it, it was really spread across. So here's your big chance. If you need a, a break to go to the toilet or get your cup of tea, we suggest now's the time to do it. And then get back to your comfy chair, get settled, don't go anywhere, and uh, come back to us at Duff TV and we'll give you all the highlights of what's going to be an enthralling last quarter. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for what is going to be a very, very interesting quarter of football. I am Andrew Silver Fox Hopwood, and I'm joined by Richard Bear Robinson, and we were just having a bit of a chat 
there, Bear. I know that as the uh, senior coach of the North Hobart Football Club, you've had a, a little bit of uh, time with all of the groups from uh, Auskicks all the way up. And you were just saying that uh, Coach Harris has done quite a few extras and worked on the fitness side of things uh, as far as the Demons are concerned. Yeah, probably a month ago. Um they realised that they were going to finish on top of the ladder and they need to make sure they did a bit of extra work so if they get to this situation that they can be running on top of the ground. So the message from Harris would have been at three quarter time, you've done all the work, this is why you've done it. The next 20 minutes is just give everything you've got. Yes, it's uh, no time to be standing from behind. You've got to lead from the front and don't leave anything in the tank uh, because... You don't want to be back in years to come thinking, what if, if I only done that. Give it your best shot, and that's all we can hope as uh, Smith picks that ball up and North Hobart are going into attack very early, overrunning the ball this time. They're under a bit of pressure as uh, North Hobart oh, apply a great tackle there by uh, Ryan, and that has certainly set the stage for a very interesting uh, last stanza as Clarence take that kick in quickly. And gee whiz, that was good anticipation to just come across and uh, cut that ball off. Is Roland, what is it? Yeah, again? oh, that was just crucial. Came across, did a wonderful play, as we can see here. Look at that. Ran from deep back, Rollins, and affected that spoil, where Clarence thought they were out. Oh. Going forward again, couldn't get the point. Oh. Giving a little bit of uh, don't argue, as if you don't mind, by Blasky after the umpire didn't see that. But he picks it up. A little bit of feeling coming in. Let's be blunt, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there. This is the grand final. There's no coming back next week. Under 16 and a half division. It's a big game as an errant handball still sees the, the favour North Hobart. A quick handball over from Carmichael. He's already got two goals. It's a ball running loose. Running hard towards it was Williams. Backed up by Pullen. Trying to hold him in. Bumped over. And Clarence get it out of the danger zone. But not for too long as picking it up is Brown, who's played well across half-back flank. Coming out, giving the Donagi was Parsons. And I think he's fended off, and that's how the umpire seen it. Got him a little bit too high there, Bear. Yeah, he did. Um, but North have had all the running in the first couple of minutes of this quarter. Again, it's been a pattern of the play. At the start of the game, North Hobart started off uh, with a real flourish, but didn't capitalise on the scoreboard. And that's exactly what's happened here. They've only, only been two minutes in. There's been a second whistle as Clarence took possession. And he said, I want that one downfield. I'm not sure what that was for. I'm not criticising. I'm just saying I had my eyes where the, I thought the ball was going to go. And uh, Maxi Lamb, here it is. We couldn't quite. He's just about to run off. And... I just can't see what happened he's paid, I think he's paid a 50 against the North boy just holding on to the Clarence jumper. Let the game play. Yep. Well, it is Maxie Lamb who had a shot a few minutes ago. He's had a couple of shots. The first one he put through. The second one didn't quite make the distance. He's a very accurate kick. Lamb. Here he goes. Coming in. Gets much better purchase on it this time. It's close. I think it's gone over. It's all clear. Go to Lamb, go to Clarence. Game on here at North Hobart Oval. It was a very good kick for goal. Nice fluent action. Just got the journey. Yes, uh, from deep downtown we saw there on the Mood Food replay. And ladies and gentlemen, we have got a very exciting game here. It's three minutes in. North Hobart, 4-5-29. They're hanging on by their fingertips to Clarence, 4-2-26. And the thing is, although uh, North have looked good when they've had the ball, Clarence always look dangerous when they get it inside their 50 because it's, it's looked a bit more open. North get the centre clearance again, though. Here they go. It's come down, but uh, holding firm, taking a very timely mark, is uh, Clarence defender. They come out towards the attacking side. And McCullum's taken a mark. McCullum, he keeps it low. Oh, really? oh, coming across. Good defensive work was Bingham, and that's what you need now. Showing courage. He's over the ball. He's been taken high. Surely he's going to get the free kick. He's been deemed to be uh, holding the ball. All right. Ward uh, is going to take that one. He kicks it in. Goes the punch. Clarence, Clarence is certainly uh, building 
some belief here as uh, Blasky kicks it almost straight up. It's knocked down. Who's first the ball? It's North Hobart. They pick it up. A handball came out from Butler. That's a strong tackle. No prior. And the umpire will ball it up. Well, it's certainly picked up a notch here, Bear. Yeah, that, that was the right decision there. That was a very good tackle. No prior opportunity. So this is a really important stoppage here. So North Hobart. They need to get there. Dukes on the ball. But they don't. Well picked up by Noble. Noble turns that ball around. He drives it forward. Backing back. You've got to be careful on this possession. Played that very nicely. And there'll be a ball in. <laughs> Now's the time just to search around and make sure you've got your man. Arms across. Defend at all costs. In it comes. Comes over the back. This is a dangerous area. Clarence pick it up. There they have those loose players. It uh, comes out as Boersboom kicks it in towards the goals. It's rolling closely towards them, and it's just missed. <clears throat> but another point, another valuable score as Clarence move on to 4-3-27. That's where North have to be really careful, though. Like, Clarence is seeing the boys back around the arc. The North forwards have to roll up to ensure that they don't get the easy ball. Well, they're going towards the ball. Clarence are really starting to believe that they can do this as they've got some numbers now comes out they can't get the handle on the ball a lot more pressure that's a terrific uh, tackle by ferguson and he's going to get the free kick very pro north hobart crowd just near our fixed microphone headed up by the president we know he's uh, very can't passionate hear him, can you? <laughs> <laughs> i reckon you can hear him from uh, other side of the river but that's what you want a bit of passion and why wouldn't you be passionate? We've got a cracker of a game now. Here is the future of both clubs, and uh, it's been on display all day, right from the under-13s, where these two teams faced off in what was a cracker of a game, and it's finishing with a very, very exciting duel. North Hobart, 4-5-29. Clarence, 4-3-27. Boundary throw-in, just taking their time. Six minutes gone in what's scheduled to be a 20-minute quarter, ladies and gentlemen, and no time on. If it happens to be a draw bear, you play extra minutes. So Clarence picked that one up. In it goes. North pick it up. It's Rollins. He affects the pass. Back out to Ferguson. In effect to Bingham. Gets it over the top. That's Pullen. Pullen goes towards that half forward flank. Coming out to get it was Parsons. But Clarence across that half back line are really standing tall at the minute. Big contest. And it's Clarence who pick it up. Here they go. Out wide. Shepherd on. It's desperation stakes. Close to the line. And Campbell Good sees that one over. They're wow. peppering a bit here, the ruse, aren't they? They look dangerous, don't they, at the moment? They, there's just something about them. They're going in and they just do look dangerous. <clears throat> and even across the half-back flank, uh, Clarence seemed to be repelling the attacks a little bit too easy at the moment. Yeah, they do. Um... They've got the momentum definitely at the moment, the Roos, so... Gee whiz, so that one uh, was paid that it didn't go the distance and the umpire came over and said, well, I, given that was the case, I've got to give you an opportunity and he's going to throw it up. There it goes. Good tap by North to the advantage of their own player, but it's Clarence who picked that one up. My goodness, the opportunist goal. And Clarence now, for all but I think the first time in the match... They've got, uh, they've gone the lead there. Yeah, there's poor accountability there from North Hobart. Um, no arms across, too many loose men for mine, so. The other thing, if we were to be slightly uh, critical, there was a lot of just one arms going out instead of body lining the ball. Yeah, it's been no, disappointing. No mate. whole commitments to it, was there? Yeah, you've got to watch the hips. So I think uh, that was Colby Whitelaw who screwed that one around. Yeah, he's been really good all day. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, eight and a half minutes gone, and for the first time we see that Clarence, 5-3-33 with their noses in front against North Hobart, 4-5-29. It has, <coughs> excuse me, really picked up a notch. It's a crucial time in the game. It's halfway, all but halfway through the last quarter, and uh, Clarence uh, putting their foot on the accelerator. They are saying that we aren't done. In fact, we think this is our game as North Hobart. They're fighting back. It goes to the half-forward flank. I think playing in front this time was Maxi Marsh, and he's been rewarded, and he's going to take a kick. He's probably too far out to score from there. 
He's got someone short. It's a good lead and a very nice kick. Not good defensive work there, Bear. Nah, a bit lazy, the ruse here again. Oh, Ryan's got it. So, uh, Keegan Ryan, he got loose as well. I think the Clarence defenders dropped off with the assumption that there's going to be a shot on goal. And good awareness by North Hobart not to turn their back. He uh, went back, kept the eyes up and uh, put it over to what thought was a player in better position. And it's uh, Keegan Ryan to have a shot on goal. Are you backing him? Coach's curse, I'll say no, which will mean he'll kick it. Here we go. Has to swing a little bit. Right to the left. Oh, he's put it through. Cometh the moment. Cometh the young man. And I tell you what, that is always the sign of a good team, that when you're challenged, you're able to come back. And boy, didn't they need that one. And I like the way they took their time. They didn't bomb it. They didn't panic. And they got what was a crucial goal. Yeah, it's still a really good kick under pressure from Absolutely. the young man. Absolutely. Um, it is a tough pocket to kick goals from, but as I said, he, he liked it off the boot. Plenty of celebration, so hopefully it gets the boys up and about and they can go again. Well, that finds North Hobart 5-5-35 to Clarence 5-3-33. I don't know how you're doing out there in TV land, but I tell you what, it's very, very tense up here at North Hobart Oval. Mm. And there's a fair bit of steam coming up in the box because... We are on the edges of our seat as North Hobart are going forward again. Oh no, we've dropped off the back instead of competing for the ball. It is uh, Ryan there. It's a bit of a snap on goal. And North Hobart have put that one through for another goal. That's two within the minute there. Ryan again. Ryan decides, Hoppy. Have a look. Is he fired up? Keegan Ryan has got two goals in this last quarter. One from a lead out, and that one he's, he uh, has a, had a snap on his wrong side, as we see here on the Mood Food replay. I was about to be very critical of the uh, forwards there because they dropped off and didn't contest that ball coming in. But luck is the fortune as it dropped there for Ryan. And uh, a few seconds ago, Clarence had forged their way to the front and fighting back like a good side North Hobart were a little bit against the ropes uh, that was terrific spirit there bear yeah i think it's a result um the center clearance work whoever's getting the footy out of the center clearance seems to be able to score so oh talking of which that ball has gone down and clarence have taken a classic mark ned ward just arched his back he leant up and put the two arms and has taken a magnificent mark yeah, it was exceptional contested mark look at that Again, he had no idea who was coming behind, and I love to see kiddies do that. Here he comes, Ward. Taking his time over the ball. Kicks. He's kicked it. And he's kicked it truly. Wow-wee. This is a very good game now, Bear. Yeah, I mean, I think once the D's kicked the last goal, they probably may have been a bit complacent at that centre yes. bounce. And obviously Whitelaw being in the middle was able to extract it out and get it in quickly to to a one-on-one -on -one contested mark by Ward. So it's definitely game on. There's still plenty of time to go in the game. Ooh, so certainly is. And uh, where goals were very hard to come by, it's really starting to open up, isn't it? Uh, maybe a bit of fatigue setting in or they're really starting to get some systems going. Yeah, I think this centre bounce here, I'll be getting arm across uh, Whitelaw. Good tap out. It's gone to the advantage of Clarence. Good smother coming in by Griggs. And he goes as far as Clarence. Oh, they pick it up. That was good. Williams kicks it forward. There's been an infringement. And Clarence to take the free kick. Much to the chagrin of the uh, Demon fans down in front of the effects microphone. You saw there was came in, pushed off the ball. And there we see the free kick. Clarence take it. Going out wide. Going up early was uh, Rollins. And it was deemed that it affected the fly Need someone of Donaghy. Donaghy goes down now, looking for a strong mark. Comes out the side. Hunter, Hunter's there. He goes again for a second effort. Just need to get good it on over. the smother. Get it over. That's it. And uh, they can just take their breath. They were all but trying to keep that ball in. And maybe for the safety of the boundary line, it is two points the difference, ladies and gentlemen. Clarence, 6 3 39. Trailing North Hobart, 6-5-41. Clarence take possession. Ball's in dispute. Kick on goal there by uh, 
Capron Tucker, but it has gone out of bounds. And uh, North Hobart will take the free kick through the agency of uh, Thomas McGann. I'd probably go safe down the line here. Yeah, it's the only option. He's come in board a fair bit. Yeah. That's a very oh, oh, dangerous area, but uh, Bingham, very strong mark. Good hands by Bingham. He comes out towards the wide side. But it is Tommy McCullum who is uh, really showing that he's stepped up the, for the bigger age group this game and, and really going very, very nicely as Hunter. Hunter gets it in. They've got to be careful here to North. As Clarence looked very, very likely. Bingham picks it up. He is beset upon by a tsunami of ruse as they come in. And it's another stoppage. Five minutes left in this grand oh, final. Someone needs to be on white law here. Comes out. As we said before, it's certainly arms across territory. Running hard at it is good. Oh, gee, that's good play. He picked it up and just went for it. But the boundary line beat him to it. And a throw in will come in. It's uh, two points the difference. It's down Clarence's end. Very close encounter. In it goes. Donahue gets the tap out. Good tackle here by North. They're trying to hold that ball up. And another stoppage. Very tense. I reckon that'll be coming through your screen wherever you're watching this game. We hope you're enjoying it. Off the side of the boot. Time to get in front and run. Oh, good contest by both of those boys showing courage. Handball comes back towards North Hobart. Fergus was there. Tries to get away from it. Plenty of numbers by... Oh! Being pinned. Trying to get the ball out. And Clarence are going to get the free kick. We can see here on the Mood Food replay. I uh, bit unfortunate there. Clarence now about to have a kick on goal. Oh, oh. Well, he knew better than that. He decided he couldn't make the distance. So he's gone the short pass straight into the hands of Donaghy. And uh, how a man of uh, 194 odd centimetres is loose. One assumed that he was going to get the distance, but uh, Donna, he was a wake up and he's coming in to have a shot on goal. He does, and he's put that one through. Crucial kick on goal. Like all good forwards, though, playing in front. So you can see there, let's settle down. It's three minutes to go. And, uh, well, this is very, very tight. Four points in it there. What a North Hobart mail. Well, I think they have to roll the dice here, obviously. I'd be isolating Ryan deep forward. I'll yep. get your three best ball winners in the midfield. Open the forward line right up. Give Ryan some isolation. Let him do his work. So, 17 and a half minutes gone in what is going to be a 20-minute quarter to tap out. Clarence get that crucial ball. It's going out towards the defensive side. Picking it up is Ferguson. Ferguson needs Carmichael to come up and take it. He does a really good job as he's trying to just bullock his way through there. He can't get it out. He's been tackled and he's been deemed to be holding the ball. That was in pack mentality there by the Ruse. Yeah, it was a savage tackle, but it was also a very good tackle. Yeah, very good indeed. Time is the enemy. Two minutes left on the clock. Clarence into attack. Strong mark. Got to come through the centre. Taking a bounce. Takes the bounce. And crucially there for Clarence. What about that tackle by Jack Lewis? Yeah, he takes Clarence's his time. pressure's been immense the last five minutes. Certainly has. As the ball's gone down there, it's come over the back. And uh, Lamb has taken the mark. And I put it to you, Bear. This is the game right on this shot. Yeah, kicks this. It's game over. Just needs to take his time. So Turn the clock down. Maxi Lamb with just a little bit over a minute left. He's going to have a shot on this goal to ice the game for Clarence. Lamb comes in. Kicks towards it and puts it through. Nice goal there by the Ruse. And as you can see, they are absolutely cock-a-hoot because they understand now with less than a minute 
that the game is theirs. As the old master Lee Matthews said, when the goals get too many win minutes there, you're in trouble. Yeah, it's all over. Ruse are home. They certainly are. Wow. Nice celebrations just... too. Yep. So the ball comes back in towards the middle of the game. Ground, sorry. And it's 10 points the difference. 30 seconds left. Big tap out by North Hobart. Never say die attitude as they pick that one up. Rollins gets it. Gets it over towards Griggs. Comes forward. Just and the old away. demons turn around. They, they do so. They kick towards goal. And what's happened? He's kicked it. He's kicked the goal. Well, I think that was uh, Asaurus who's put that one through. It's a little bit melodramatic because, unfortunately, for the Demons, time was against them. And a very good victory there to Clarence. And you can see the excitement because they came from the clouds. They all but had no right to win that game. But they just didn't give up. They wheeled that ball forward took a couple of crucial grabs and they have scored the victory here in the under 16 and a half grand final for North Hobart Keegan Ryan a couple Carmichael a couple Marsh Asaurus and Smith and uh, for the victors it is Ward 2 Lamb 2 White Lord Donaghy and Boars Boom Singles Bear yeah, they, they just hung in there long enough, didn't they? Like It looked like when Ryan kicked a couple that North were probably going to run away with it, but like the game all day, it sort of was an arm wrestle and at the right time the Roos just hit the front. So um, full credit to Clarence. I thought I liked the look of Whitelaw. I think there could be plenty of upside for him down the track and he's some, someone I think that everyone should follow. Um, Lamb looks lively too. Yep. Obviously a clutch finish. Um, yeah, as I said, it was a good game of footy. Clarence had just got their nose in front at the right time, and unfortunately North weren't weren't quite good enough on the day, but full credit to the Roos. Yeah, if we look at the statistical information, information that uh, behold in front of on our laptops, it does suggest that North had a lot of opportunity, um, but it was across that half-back line that uh, Clarence he held firm and were able to repel a lot of those attacks. So... Well, we just collect our breath and we're going to go down and see all the awards. We get these young men, quite deservedly so, get their medals for what was a very entertaining game. Good afternoon, patrons. On behalf of the STJFL, we would like to thank all the patrons that have supported the Crips STJFL Grand Finals over the last two weekends especially to the um, mums and dads that transport the kids around every weekend. So I'd like everyone to put their hands together for all the parents. I'd now like to invite Mark Waddington to the uh, microphone to present the medallions to the umpires in today's game. Uh, thank you. Congratulations to both teams on an amazing game and a fantastic end to the final series. Uh, commiserations to North Hobart. Congratulations to Clarence. Um, if I could just congratulate uh, the umpires for their efforts today and call for them forward to accept their medal. Uh, our goal umpires, um, Jeff Hall and um, <laughs> uh, Darren Monks. Um, boundary umpires Dylan Burnett and Joe Kelly. Our field umpires, emergency umpire Darren McConnon, Ryan Graham Daft, Oliver Burnell and Ty Waddington. Thanks, Mark, and thanks to the umpires. Well, what a great game we had today to bring the grand finals to a close. It, the closest game of the day, 
and um, obviously commiserations to North Hobart and congratulations to Clarence. We, we have a medal that's been instigated this year for the most courageous player in each grand final. And it's in honour of Alex Godomsky, who passed away a few years ago. So it's the Fellowship Medal for the most courageous and the most courageous player in today's grand final has been a judge, Sebastian Brown. Well done, Sebastian. I'd now in like to invite Simon Harris to come forward and say a few words. Um, look, I think uh, today was a great spectacle for the STJFL. I think everyone in the crowd would agree with that. Um, you know, I probably thought my boys have probably been the best side all year, but You've got to be able to play on big days to win grand finals, and you guys did that today, so well done, guys. <clears throat> um, just to the STJFL, you've got a really good competition here. There's some really good kids running around. You know, we see them week in, week out, and I think Tassie football's in a good place where, you know, these kids are coming through, so, um, you know, you guys are doing a great job. There's still some kids that may slip through the cracks here and there, but I'm sure you pick, up, pick them up later on. So um, keep doing what you're doing. You've got a good competition. To Cripps, um, to Mick and Tony who run it, well done. To the Clarence Football Club, be proud. Well done, boys. Thanks, Simon. The best player on the ground medal today goes to Clarence Player, number 35, Ron Boosbone. Well done, Ron. I'd now like to call on Damien Mansfield, the Clarence coach, to come forward and say a few words. Um, welcome, uh, well done to Simon and the boys. Clearly the best team all year. Okay, just because you didn't win today, um, we can't take that away from you. So congratulations on the year. Um, some of you boys and our boys have been watching since under eights, okay, watching you boys grow up. So continue with your footy, love the game, and keep on going. So well done. <laughs> to our boys, well done. It's been a, um, a long time since January. A, um, a team of shifting numbers. We, I think we played 38 boys this year um, and would have liked to play more. But you boys are the boys that chosen on the day, so fantastic. Well done. We now invite Damien to call the boys up to receive their Premiership medallions. Okay, number two, George Chaperon. Number four, Gary Reid. Number five, Reuben Tompkins. Number six, Ned Ward. Number seven, Caleb Hunter. Number 10, Archie Hurd. Number 12, Jack Mansfield. Number 13, Matthew Noble. Number 14, Maximus Lamb. Number 15, Brodie Howard. 
Number 16, Aidan Waller. Number 17, Sam Donato. Number 18, Edward Wright. Number 19, Jack Lewis. Number 23, Craig Blask. Number 25, Colby Whitelaw. Number 28, Liam Donaghy. Number 35, Ryan Borsboom. Number 42, Tom McCullum. Number 11, Sean Daly. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> Number 44, Liam Howard. Number 57, Will Buchanan. Will Buchanan. Number 58. And the captain, number three, Nick Bailey. Yeah. 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 And the coach, Damian Mansfield. would ask the captain and the coach to come back to receive the Premiership Cup. So our 2019 Crips STJFL under 16.5 Premiers, Clarence.